What even is design? Follow the rules, don't follow the rules, form over function, function over form. What is wrong with these people? How am I supposed to learn from that? Plus, I hate wearing turtlenecks and beanies. Design is kind of a loaded word. I don't know if it's just me, but I always felt like there's this attitude, like it's something really special or intimidating. Maybe it's because it's hard to define, hard to pin down. What even is good design? You just kind of know it when you see it, which is really confusing. I think it's also tricky because it's something original to you, personal and kind of exposing in a way. It's easy to attach ego and get overly self-conscious or on the other hand, get overly big headed. Today, I want to demystify the word design. It doesn't need to be that serious. It's not really even that complicated. I think pretty much anybody can do it. Being a concept artist really isn't that hard. I'm only somewhat joking when I say if too many 3D artists start to figure this out, I might start to be in trouble. You just need to approach design in the right way, a different mindset. The problem is almost everybody teaches design perfectly backwards. They try to lay out all these parameters and rules, principles, all these definitions, form versus function, big, medium, small, rule of thirds, color theory, harmony, rhythm, symmetry, balance, unity, repetition, contrast. Half of these things are actually pretty nebulous and they all start to bleed together. So much of it's open to interpretation. And as if that's not confusing enough, they attach this caveat. You can break these rules, but only sometimes. Kind of follow them, but not too much. No wonder everybody thinks designers are pretentious airheads. And I can already hear some of the indignant commenters. Look, don't get me wrong. There's plenty of good stuff in design principles. Feel free to consume them, and you should eventually. But as is my theme on this channel, we're going to continue to keep things a little bit more fundamental. Deconstruct the process because it's the best way to learn, and we are building a strong foundation as 3D artists. At the end of the day, design starts with a much bigger and more important word, creativity. I love that word. Doesn't it sound so much nicer? Creative is something anybody can be. It's not exclusive or stressful. It's accessible and relaxing. For some reason, it's fun to be creative and it's so serious to design, but they're the same thing. We need to just shift our mindset. And as always, I have some great news, a simple exercise that anybody can do to start exploring your creative potential in your favorite 3D program. So come with me as we break down this tried and true method to unlock the power of imagination and begin our journey down the road to designing all kinds of awesome stuff in Blender without even breaking a sweat. Before we get started, this video is sponsored by my website, CG Characters. We create photogrammetry scans of people in costumes using a photogrammetry array. It's super fun. We have a ton of people using these models to create all kinds of awesome artwork. These work in all kinds of different scenes. I made it because it's a product that I want to use and I use every day, both on freelance and in personal work. The support will help us to continue to make new packs and it will keep me from doing so much freelance so that I can do more YouTube videos and make more content like this. I almost didn't want to call this PowerPoint design because I don't even want to think about it in this term of design. You don't want to start with rigid rules that don't make any sense and that are inconsistent. It's a very confusing message. So I think this is like the worst way to teach design and this is what everybody tries to do. And so it's not to critique any of this stuff. Like this is all really important. Balance, contrast, movement, and people have different words for these. And in a future video, I'd like to maybe break some of these down. And I encourage you to think about them. Super important, but it's putting the cart before the horse. So we're gonna take a step back and we're gonna look at what is the core of design and how do we start designing for fun before we even start getting into any of this stuff. Because if we can sort out that base part first, this is all gonna come naturally and you're gonna be able to have a ton more freedom. Everybody who, who is an architect, they started as a kid playing with blocks. And so we have to start first with, how do we play with our designs? How do we play in Blender? And for a lot of people who are in the 3D art space, you've maybe never thought about that. You've always tried to design things. You, you've always tried to model things from reference and you get very stuck in this rigid kind of pathway. Okay, so in my opinion, design is not hard. It's not secretive, it's not special, and it's really not even that complicated. I tend to stray away from anything you know, these rules of thirds and people try to box things in and make all these complicated rules. And directionally, some of the stuff can be really useful. I don't think we even need to think about any of this stuff yet. And I think a lot of this is going to just come by intuition and by feel once you start playing. Well, something I learned in art school that was like pivotal for me when I started really having fun making art was an exercise called the infection exercise. It was taught to me by Sean Hargraves. He's worked on a bunch of movies and TV shows and stuff. He's been a concept artist for a long time. I think it's something that they teach at Art Center pretty often. And it's basically taking a simple subject, studying it, and then forcing the visual essence of other things into it. Here is what we're going to be making today. 
first step is I want you to make a simple object. I chose a World War II walkie talkie. I got a bunch of pictures together and I modeled out a very simple block out. If you do not know how to make a block out, I have a video all on making block outs. Something about this level of detail, keep it pretty simple, pretty loose. This is not like a perfect model by any means. It's just kind of quickly made and maybe 10, 15 minutes at most. All right, once you have your block out of your shape, you'll notice I put a form above it. You will take different primitive shapes, primitive volumes, and you're going to try to infect your original design with each one. And some will be more successful than others. Don't take it too seriously. Don't be precious with it. This is an exercise. It's just like practice. And you can start to get, as you have more success with them, you can start to get more tricky and more fancy. And then ultimately, you know, you can go to something like a hexagon and then something like this, which was inspired by actually a June bug. At least that's what we call them here. One of these guys down here. And so I took the shapes from the June bug and I said, okay, how can I infect my walkie talkie with those shapes and make a little block out? This is how you explore ideas. So I'm going to take this to kind of a more complete finish. And then we're going to do a time lapse. I have recorded and voiced over a time lapse of this one with the pyramid. I think I called it a triangular prism, whatever, it's a pyramid. But you can kind of see the process. And then we will have more of these on Gumroad totally for free. You can see some of my other time lapses if you want to try this exercise on your own. So I'm recording this after the fact. I just wanted to throw this in here because I had some comments in my grenade video. This isn't something that's meant to go in your portfolio. This is my portfolio. This is all stuff that in order to find these designs and, and some of these projects, this is the process that I used. This is the way that I learned to start making things that don't exist. It's one thing in Blender to model something that does exist. That's a big challenge on its own. But then the next step that you go to from there that nobody's really covering well on YouTube is how do you start making your own content and, and make stuff that looks like it could be in a video game or in a movie or something like that. And this is how you start learning to do that. So as you're working through this, I want you to be remembering this is not an exercise for your portfolio. It's not necessarily to show off or to post for anybody. It's really just to get yourself comfortable creating something that doesn't exist yet and, and get yourself comfortable not one-to-one -one referencing things taking the essence of something, referencing that, and then instilling it into whatever you're designing. And so as you do this more, you're going to get more and more comfortable in that space. And with comfort comes confidence. And with confidence comes fun. So really think about this as an exercise. Don't give yourself the pressure of making something that has to be really impressive. I mean, you see the things that I'm making here. This isn't anything that I post on ArtStation. I wouldn't even post it on Instagram. There's nothing really, really impressive going on here, but it's a great exercise. It really is. And I'm telling you, if you try it just a couple times, it's going to change the way that you view any kind of modeling. And it's going to open up your eyes to how many possibilities there are. And so you see also referencing back to the blockout method that we had in our first video, I'm not worrying about topology at all. I'm doing all kinds of crazy stuff with Booleans. I'm not doing any of this in an optimized way. It's super rough, super sloppy. I'm doing Booleans and I'm just applying them because I don't want to fuss with it. This is like a blockout stage. If I have to remodel this whole thing, it's totally fine. Right now, my main focus is finding the idea, finding out what I'm going to be making. So I'm not, I'm not sitting here and, and even spending much, I'm not even spending much time thinking about how I'm going to make this. I'm just doing stuff. Like here, I, I could have maybe done a loop cut and, and made this some different way, but it was faster to just make a Boolean. And even when I'm doing my Booleans, I'm thinking of ways that maybe the Booleans are triangular. How can we take any of these little cuts and slices and shapes and just try to get that triangular form language into every single part? And it doesn't have to be so literal. You can cut off edges and, and kind of make things squared off, you're trying to get, the point of this exercise is to try and find unique ways to, to force that language into your subject.
These, I would really try to limit yourself to maybe 15 to 20 minutes. You don't wanna sit here and noodle for too long. If you've been spending that much time on one of these, just start another one. These aren't precious. Also for my materials, I like to pick just three materials, a main one, a secondary one, and a tertiary one. And usually your reference can be broken down into kind of three main materials, and that's going to make it a lot easier as you start playing with different design ideas. I'm also thinking about the main features of this subject. So it being a World War II walkie-talkie, it has some kind of control buttons. I'm not going to get super into the nitty gritty of the function of each button. As we go further into the design process, that's something we can sort out. But I'm just generally thinking, okay, there's some buttons to control this thing somewhere. Maybe there's some screws. There might be a knob or something on the top. There's an antenna and there's generally these, I'm trying to retain on all of these, those angled uh, microphone and speaker combination. Because I think that's really a key part of the, the original object. All right, so you can see how if you continue to do these after you've exhausted all of your primitives, then we're going to start looking at some more exciting references. And from there, you just keep growing and growing and growing. If you give yourself a reference that doesn't work out, that's okay. Just try it again. Reset. This is something that's going to get easier and easier with practice. You don't need to do max difficulty all at once. You can really easily just ramp this up and make it more sophisticated and subtle. And before you know it, you're just going to be a full-blown designer. I think these are all really nice examples of how we can take the essence of something, a visual theme, and we could just start injecting it into all kinds of different things. And, and that's how you really start having fun creating. So this is Lewis Laurent. Definitely go check him out. Some of the best work in the industry, in my opinion. But you can see, like he's, I'm not sure what he was looking at to reference these, but he's infected the same visual theme across all of these different things. And it doesn't necessarily, he uses 3D and 2D. Doesn't necessarily matter if it's 3D or 2D. You're just exploring. This is a really good example by my friend Danny McGarry. This is one of my favorite pieces um, that he has for kind of showing this. I mean, you can see this in a lot of his work, but just pay attention to how they form language and the color scheme and the just the shapes of the ship match the little robots that come out of it. Even something like as simple as that, that's something that you need to practice and you need to get better at. I, again, this is somebody I don't know. I just found his work on ArtStation a while ago, and I thought it was really cool. And uh, here you can see, like, we've got two different gadgets, but they're both living in that same world, that same form and shape language. So I think that's a really nice example. And you can even go really crazy with this, almost literal at times. And I found this artist, I, of course, don't know how to pronounce that. You know, you can just go go wild with taking one reference and just trying to infect it. Like, okay, let's make a robot out of wet floor signs. And, and it becomes super fun. And then here's like one of the most extreme examples. I found this one and I thought this was super, super fun. Gun vegetables. I don't even know what that means, but I didn't know I wanted it, but I kind of love it. Okay, so here's your assignment. Pick an object. It can be any object. It tends to be if you pick older things, they'll work a lot better. If you complete the assignment and you'd like to get feedback on it, if you purchase anything on cgcharacters.com, there is a feedback portal up at the top of the site. You can upload everything there, give me some notes, and I'll get you some feedback for free along with your purchase. And you can do this an unlimited number of times, so please take advantage of it. All right, see you in the next video.